Good morning. And a very special Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers that are here in the assembly. Boy, a mother is one special person. This is my first Mother's Day without mine, and I miss her more than you could ever put into words. Treasure your mother as long as you have her. A mother, a good mother, is very, very giving and treat and shows us what true love is. And I have to thank uh, the elders, first of all, for placing the confidence in me and another time. Thank you, Brother Jim and, and, and Brother Joe, for your confidence and Brother Charles, which we find right now in uh, Virginia Beach having a good time. Uh, later in the day, I'm sure that he had told me that they're fully open up there and the family plans to attend worship this morning. And we're so blessed to have him, and he's so deserving of the vacation and Sister Teresa and the entire family. I told him when I said, when you get home, I want to hear this is the best vacation you've ever had. And I hope they have a wonderful time there, so deserving of it. And I want to thank uh, Brother Rick for doing our audio video or whatever they call it nowadays work. I want to thank Brother Patrick for our song leading. I suggested a number of songs, and he's already picked them out, and I'm so blessed. And Brother Joe in advance tonight, also he's going to uh, refer to or uh, lead us in uh, songs that I have requested, and I thank him so much. And we are blessed beyond measure. And bear with me, I want to get set here, and I may fumble and bumble around a little bit this morning, but we want to talk about H-O-P-E this morning, hope, 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 and we're going to refer to two songs that we've sang already, and then we're going to be referring to our invitation song, and I hope I hope that our lesson this morning can dovetail into the lesson tonight, because tonight we're going to be speaking about eternal life. Why this lesson this morning? Because we need to get ready for heaven. We're going to speak about readiness tonight, uh, too. So I want us to think back. For a moment, some of you won't have to th think back that far, and others will have to think back a little farther, they're a little older. But I want you parents to think, and this being Mother's Day, I think this kind of dovetails into that, you parents to think about the birth of your children. That should be one of the highlights of your life, right? Parents, the birth of their children. When a, when a child is born, those parents have a hope. First of all, they hope when that baby is born that it's normal. Ten fingers, ten toes, two good ears, a good mind, and good eyesight. They have that hope of that child being healthy, don't they? They hope that child grows up and, and uh, gets a good job and has a nice place to live. That they also hope that, uh, that if they choose to marry, that they get a, a good mate someday. But the Christians, the Christian parents hope that that child will grow up and obey the gospel and become a, a Christian. That is the hope of all hopes, that e eternal hope, eternal life in heaven. It has been said that hope equals desire plus expectation. Well, I've got good news and you already know it. The gospel gives you and I hope. The good news of Jesus Christ and his life that he led. His death, his burial and resurrection. We can read that about that in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. The gospel uh, uh, 
gives us the uh, is from God and gives power to save us from our sins if we would o- but obey it. And my question you, to you this morning is, we already sang 138. I want us to turn there. You have your song books there. I want to notice that song a little more. These songs, uh, three of them, are going to serve as uh, a reinforcement of the lesson, you might say, for, le- uh, for a better term. Uh, the song is 138, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. All right. My, I'm going to read all four stanzas, then I'll close with the uh, chorus. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust in the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. When darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. His oath, his covenant, his blood support me in the overwhelming flood. When all around me my soul gives way, he then in all is my all hope and stay. When he shall come in triumph sound, oh, may I in, then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Paul uses this word hope some three times in, in the book of Colossians, the uh, first chapter. And that's the basis of our lesson this morning is hope. And Colossians 1.5 says, For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof ye heard before, in the word of the truth of the gospel. Our hope is laid up in heaven. We think of Jesus Christ uh, with God from the beginning and he came down to save man from his people from their sins. Uh, Matthew chapter one, Christ after purging our sins with his own blood sat down on the right hand of God. The Christian hope is laid up in heaven when Christ, where Christ and God dwell. You and I have the hope of an inheritance also. Colossians 1.12 tells us, Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be takers of the inheritance of the saints in light. We're going to talk a little bit more about this inheritance, and we will do so by turning to uh, Romans chapter 8, and we'll be looking at verses uh, 14 through 17. Romans 8, 14 through 17. For as many of us as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to the fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, and heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, If so, be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. And then I want to look at the character of this inheritance. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again into a lively hope. That's a living hope. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. 
to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven uh, for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Yes, we see that this inheritance is uh, indestructible. It's undefiled and it fadeth not away. Heaven is a pure place. That's where we're all striving to get. That's what our hope is. After this life is over, to be with those that's gone before us and to be with Jesus and all that we read about in the Old Testament and the New that are faithful to be with them and God and Christ throughout eternity. That's that's a, that's a great hope. There's no other hope greater than that. In the book of Revelation, the chapter is 21, and I believe the verse is 27, and that they're uh, talking about in heaven that there is nothing defiled and uh, neither anything that worketh a lie, but the as it is written, all that are there are written in the book of the Lamb's book of life. When we think of those at Colossae, we look at those saints. Let's look at some of the characteristics that they had and that all saints had. Those who have obeyed the gospel. We need to be in the Lord's church to be the Saved as, the, as those that were saved in the days of Noah when, they, when the great flood came, they were in the ark. Well, the saved today are in the church. And if you're not in the church, you can get in the church by taking some certain steps. And we'll talk about those later in the sermon. The saints at Colossae had been delivered from the power of darkness. Colossians 1 team. They were redeemed by the power of uh, from the power of bondage of sin, Colossians 1.14. And they were the called out body, which Jesus is the head of the body, the church, Colossians 1.18. They were forgiven of their sins, the guilt and condemnation of sins. A saint is one that is separated from the world and concentrated unto the Lord. Now I want to talk about the hope of this good news. And we turn to uh, another scripture in Colossians chapter 1. We've noticed verse 5. And now we're going to notice verse 23. Where... Paul, the inspired writer, the writer of approximately half of the New Testament, pens forth these words. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister." The hope of the gospel. We need to be grounded and be settled. by the, the gospel gives us that hope. And be steadfast. We need to have that anchor. Patrick just led us in 253 a moment ago. And now that's another song we're going to notice. We have an anchor. And we're going to go in why we need that anchor. Some explanation to it after we notice this song. Will your anchor hold in the storms of life when the clouds unfold their wings of strife? When the strong tides lift and the cables strain, will your anchor drift or firm remain? It is safely moored, twill the storm withstand, for tis well secured by the Savior's hand. And the cables pass from his heart to mine can defy the blast through strength divine. It will firmly hold in the straits of fear when the breakers told the reef is near. 
Thou the tempest rage, though the tempest rage, and the wild winds blow, not an angry wave shall our bark o'erflow. When our eyes behold through the gathering night, the city of gold, our harbor bright, we shall anchor fast by the heavenly shore with the storms all past forevermore. We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll, fastened to the rock which cannot move, grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love. Now, there's a reason why you and I need an anchor. We need an anchor. We need an anchor. What's an anchor do? Well, Jim knows that when we're out fishing and we find out where we fish, we want to anchor on that spot so that boat don't drift because that's where the fish are. Well, this is a lot more important than fish. We, want, we don't want to drift. The Christian may drift. Hebrews 6, 19 and 20 tells us which hope we have an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast of the soul, and which entereth into that wherewith the veil entered. Even Jesus, Jesus made a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. The Christian also may drift into unbelief. Hebrews 3, uh, 12 and 13 tells us, Take heed, that means give attention to, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Yes, we need that anchor. There's more points yet. The Christian may drift into impenitence. If they shall fall away and renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify themselves, the Son of God, afresh, and put him to an open shame. The Christian can fall away. The Christian may drift into willful sin. Be an apostate. Hebrews 10, 26 tells us, for if we sin willfully after that we've received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. One cannot be saved without hope. We are saved by hope. The hope is the hope of the gospel. Where would I be without that hope? And now we want to focus on song. It will be our invitation song. I hope by noticing this song before the invitation and as we sing it, maybe it'll, it'll penetrate a little deeper because it's a special song. And if you'll notice, 720 now without him. Without him, I could do nothing. Without him, I'd surely fail. Without him, I would be drifting like a ship without a sail. And now this second verse really rings home. Without him, I would be dying. Without him, I'd see I'd be enslaved. Without him, my life would be hopeless, hopeless. But, but with Jesus, thank God I'm saved. Oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, do you know him today? You can't turn him away. Oh, Jesus, oh, Jesus, without him, how lost I would be now. I got a little ahead of myself. Let's turn to the book of Ephesians to illustrate being without hope a little bit more. Ephesians chapter 2, and we'll notice some of the early verses in the ch uh, chapter and then the mid verses, and I will make the point here. And you hath he quickened 
who were dead in trespasses and sin, wherewith in time past ye walked according to the course of the world, according to the prince of the power of the air, and the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, talking about their former state, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, whereby nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, but God, who is rich in his mercy, for in that he, uh, for his great love wherein he loved us. And it goes on to say, for time's sake, in verse 8, that we're saved, for by grace are you saved through faith, and, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. He goes on to say in verse 12, he says that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenants of the promise, having no hope. Without God in the world. But now, he obeyed the gospel, they were in Christ. But now in Christ, Jesus, who, who were sometimes afar off, are made nigh, by the blood of Jesus Christ, by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, that's talking about Jew and Gentile, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. So you can see what it was like without hope. But we're not without hope. That's what the Christian has. He's looking forward, not looking in the past. We look forward. We learn from our past mistakes, I hope. I know I try to, sometimes I don't learn enough, but we learn and we hope we have that heavenly hope. And we'll notice tonight, it even goes a little further. John uh, takes us a little further in John chapter, 1 John chapter five. So I want you to be back for that eternal life lesson tonight. And this dovetails, this hope dovetails right into eternal life. Remember the uh, transfiguration in Matthew uh, 17? You remember that account? I like the word count better than I like the word Bible story. I like the word account better. Let's notice that again. And we're thinking about the hope of glory now. The hope of glory, which uh, Christ in you is the hope of glory. And that's our Next verse, got a little ahead of myself, uh, Colossians 1, 27 will be the final verse that we notice with the word hope as far as the three in Colossians. To whom God would make known what is the riches of his glory and the mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Now, let's go back to Matthew chapter 17 and let's recount that, bring to our memory that transfiguration where God is putting Jesus in glory, glorify the Son. And after six days, Jesus taking Peter and James and John, his brother, and bringeth them into a high mountain apart. And he was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as light. And behold, there appeared unto him Moses, Elias, talking with him. And then Peter answered, then answered Peter, and said to, to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. Let us build, make three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses and one for Elias. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them and a voice out of the cloud and said, this is my beloved son and whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Hear Christ. He's the one that is glorified, okay? Paul said of the Christians, that they receive glory and honor and immortality in 
Romans chapter 2. To them who are patient, continue in well-doing and seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. It's the last statement in that verse. The Christian shall be manifest in glory. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then ye also shall appear with him in glory. We're going to talk about Jesus uh, coming back tonight as we look at uh, eternal life. And then the Christian shall receive a glorious body. The Bible tells us in Philippians chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. For our conversation, that means citizenship, is in, an, in heaven, from which we also look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. As Paul winds up the uh, first chapter, this is wound up in, in uh, Colossians chapter 1, where we've noticed three examples of hope, uh, he makes a very important statement in the next to the last verse of that chapter. The great apostle, many consider the greatest Christian on record, who taught many, many, many. Notice what he says in verse 28 of Colossians chapter 1. Whom we preach, warning every man, and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. That means complete. You think Paul was concerned about their souls? Yes, that's what his whole mission in life was. So he was so concerned about us having that hope. And Paul also in Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 and 2 encouraged us to work toward our hope. We just can't lay back and hope and do nothing. We need to have what we call an active hope, a hope of faith. Notice what he says in Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 and 2. If ye then be risen with Christ... Seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. Yes, we've noticed this hope this morning. And the Christian has this hope. The Christian has a hope laid up in heaven. We've noticed in in. Uh, Colossians 1, 5. The Christian is to have that hope in the gospel. And we have that inheritance. And we're heirs with God and joint heirs with Christ. And Christ is our anchor. That's what keeps us steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as you Know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, a paraphrase of 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Christ is our hope, the hope of glory. We all want to go to heaven as Brother Jim, and thank you for that prayer earlier, brother. I failed to mention that. But we all want to get to heaven. We're going to notice a verse coming up here. It ties that in with getting to heaven. And God is not going to forget us. Our labor of love towards his name we'll notice in just a minute. Now a scripture from the Old Testament. The wicked is driven away in his wickedness. 
but the righteous hath hope or refuge in his death. If I'm living faithful Christian life and I die, I'm ready. I'm ready. We're going to talk about somebody that was ready tonight. Was ready and he said so and he gives us hope. Romans chapter 15 verse 4 says, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Yes, we notice that lively hope, that living hope, that hope in the resurrection of the dead when Jesus was raised by the Father from the dead. That gives us hope. An inheritance, an incorruptible inheritance, undefiled that fadeth not away. We want to go to that city where he is the light. 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 58 there again says, Therefore, my beloved brother, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And now, as we close, I'm going to notice one more scripture. God's words tells us this. And this gives me hope. Hebrews 6 and 10 says, For God is not unrighteous to forget your labor of love which ye have showed towards his name, and that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. Yes, you have a hope. The Christian has a hope of going to heaven after this life is over. We don't know how long we're going to be here. I may not finish this sermon. Or maybe uh, there'll be a, the, those here in this assembly someday that will go over 100 years old. I hope so. But we don't, that thing is to be ready. And you can be ready. You can have that hope of eternal life. First, you must hear the word. You have to hear. As Paul preached and we preach today. You must believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God or you'll die in your sins. You must repent of your sins. Acts 2.38 or Acts 3.19. You must confess Christ before man, Matthew 10.32. And then you must be baptized for the remission of sins. And then the Lord adds you to the church, universal. And then, as Charles likes to say, we live faithful. Faithful unto death. So, this gives us hope. We have that heavenly hope. And we're going to talk tomorrow, or tonight, more about the uh, eternal life aspects. And we want to go to heaven. That's what it's all about. We want to go to heaven, be with the redeemed of all ages, and... Miss hell, as Johnny Ramsey used to say. So if you're subject to the Lord's invitation, if there's anything that we can do for you, won't you come to, and as uh, we stand and sing, and I want you to listen to the words of this song, without him. Without him. How lost I would be. Without him, I would be hopeless. But with him, thank God. Thank God.